I'm Jamie LaBella, and this is 4 for 4 Tech, where we discuss four tech topics in, you guessed it, just four minutes. First up, Mark Zuckerberg is the latest target of high-profile hacking. His social media accounts on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Pinterest were briefly hijacked and then restored, thanks in part to a weak password. So, James, could this have been prevented? Well, clearly, yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, Silicon Valley tech titan. Even he kind of can't get his password security straight, just like a normal person. It's kind of mind-blowing to me. But what's interesting about this is that the hackers are claiming that they got hold of this data through the 2012 LinkedIn data breach. Now, it's not clear exactly what happened here, but you know everything seems to be pointing towards the fact that, yeah, he had a really weak password at that time. He's human, like the rest of us. Right. So, I mean, if, if the CEO of Facebook is getting hacked, how vulnerable are the rest of us? I think we're all pretty vulnerable to this, and it's something that we've been fighting for a really long time, and we've been hearing about passwords and weak passwords for a long time. And you could do two-step verification and things to protect it, but I think the big problem is that a vast majority of people don't understand the severity of this, and we don't even find out about this until they're sold in the market. So it just shows the whole system is really far behind where it should be. Xavier, what have we learned from this? Um, I think it's just what Jen said. I mean, two-factor authentication is the way to go, not just having a password, but having a special code sent to your phone or another trusted device. Um, in addition to that, you know, the password's weak. We can also use our biology as the password going forward, and I think it's going to be really popular in the future. I think you're right, and, and at this point now, we're using a capital letter. It has to be a certain amount of characteristics, a symbol, so it's only a matter of time, I feel like, till these hijackers are going to be up to date with, with our new and difficult passwords. Mm -hmm. So make a very good point there. So a social robot that can interact with pedestrians. Researchers from Stanford University have created a prototype robot that can self-navigate the streets and halls by imitating human etiquette. Not to mention, he's adorable. So Xavier, what exactly can he do? Yeah, so these researchers at Stanford made this Jack Rabot. Uh, it's a robot that learns sidewalk etiquette and uh, using an algorithm. Um, and it kind of can tell where you're about to go so it doesn't run into you because we all have that problem on the sidewalk. Uh, yeah. So, Jen, uh, looking at like autonomous cars out there, why is it so much more difficult for this robot to, you know, navigate the sidewalk? I think that we're a little bit more unpredictable when you're on a sidewalk, you're going in various directions, you're not paying attention, you're looking at your phone, at least with the streets it's a little bit more predictable, but I think that it's the same kind of technology and anything that improves on the pedestrian side of this will help the autonomous vehicles as well and there could be a future when we have a whole bunch of autonomous, whether it's robot or cars, driving around and hopefully they'll be smart enough to avoid us. So, James, what's the end goal here? I don't know. I mean, I worry a little bit about how this technology is going to develop. It's all well and good kind of on the mean streets or the mean sidewalks of Stanford. <laughs> but do you remember Hitchbot, the hitchhiking robot that kind of made it as far as Philadelphia and then was beheaded? Like, I, I, so, uh, you know, technology is kind of proceeding at pace. I don't know whether people are ready for this stuff, though. Right, and I think he's absolutely adorable. Have you guys seen him? He has a little bow tie. Nice. He's Very adorable. Oh, yeah. So he's friendly. He's cute. I mean, BB-8's got to watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Wish you could take the lug out of luggage? Well, one company has designed a smart suitcase that climbs stairs with built-in tracks. So, Jen, how does it work? Yeah, so this company called Pack. they have a Kickstarter going right now. It's brand new. They, they haven't raised a lot of money, a couple thousand dollars out of a... a 65,000 that they're looking for, but right now it works as it, it has a track similar to a tank, and it's not motorized, so you still have to lug the the uh, luggage up to the stairs despite what they say, uh, but it is supposed to help you. It has a longer um, um, handle, and it kind of just glides up a lot easier than having to go step by step and lugging it, so hopefully we'll see what happens. James, would you use it? I think it's a good idea. I mean, I'm kind of surprised no one's gone to this before. I mean, we all yeah. kind of see people like lugging their luggage up, up and down on the subway and it's kind of so difficult for people. So I think anything that gives you a bit of an edge with this is cool. But yeah, I, I think I would try it. So how would this smart suitcase, you know, compete against all the other smart suitcases out Oh, well, there? the other smart suitcases have, you know, battery packs and they have little scales to measure your items. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's good about this is that, you know, you always go on vacation, you come back with more souvenirs than you had before. So being able to carry that easily upstairs would be great. I just want it to be motorized. Like, I think once we have motorized, that's what's going to be really cool. That's a good idea to have it motorized. And I know when you, when you go away and you carry that, it depends how heavy it is. I know we're carrying shoes or something in that bag. You know, it depends how heavy it is. What if it goes back the other way? <laughs> right? <laughs> chasing after. I know. Chasing after it, exactly. So Walmart is turning to drones to place some of its workers. In an attempt to speed up distribution, the world's largest retailer is testing drone technology to check warehouse inventories in the United States. So Xavier, how fast does it work? Um, pretty fast. So we saw Amazon kind of uh, try to get drone delivery to be a thing in the public streets. Mm -hmm. But Walmart is using drones inside the manufacturing warehouse in private to, to better optimize you know, facilities. 
So, Jen, I mean, this is great news for Walmart, but not so good news for, you know, labor workers or people who are working, right? Right. We continue to see uh, manufacturers replace humans with robots. Foxconn did it, which is a major Apple supplier. I think that, though, these retailers need to think of ways to reduce costs. They have competition from the likes of Amazon, and they have to improve their margins. So, for them, putting this whole fleet of, of drones in their warehouses, it's going to help them reduce costs. It's going to be more efficient. And, unfortunately, that's hopefully humans can be used for more advanced functions in the future. James, what do you think? I mean, it's a dilemma moving forward. Like, we're going to see more of this type of thing. I mean, and it, it's interesting. Like, the warehouse is a perfect environment for drones and drone deliveries. It's a familiar environment. It's kind of a less dangerous setting than the streets. So, yeah, we're going to have to kind of juggle a lot of this stuff. And, you know, potentially, I think that a lot of jobs could be taken over the next 20, 30, 40 years if this develops. I think you're absolutely right. And Walmart's just trying to keep up with other, you know, drone distributors like, like Amazon as well. They make a very good point there, guys. So now you know what we think, and tell us what you think using the hashtag 4 for 4 tech We'll see you back here again next week.